After traveling up through Asia, passing through Vietnam, China and onto the Korean Peninsula, where we skirted the North Korean border, we finally made it to the port town of Donghae, South Korea. From where we are hitching a ride on a ship heading out of Korea and north towards the deep far east of Russia. Welcome aboard the Eastern Dream, bound for Vladivostok. We are setting off in about an hour and a half. We are still sitting in the port right now, just chilling on the deck, enjoying the sun. And I can't believe that we're doing this journey. We've been reading about it for so many years and we wanted to do it so much. For the last 10 years we were planning this trip, but we always thought that we're going to do it the other way around. But this is even better. Like we're coming to see our family. We're so excited. And as opposed to a cargo ship that we got last year across Caspian Sea, this is a mixed ship, so we've got passengers, and cargo here, and we even have a nightclub on this ship. Traveling by boat is one of the most incredible ways to feel the scale of the world and beauty of the oceans, and something we fell completely and utterly in love with when we took cargo ship across the Caspian Sea last year, from Azerbaijan to Kazakhstan. But this relatively unknown journey in particular, traveling between two completely different worlds, is one that we've been pining to experience for years. The boat itself is pretty wild and we'll explore it properly a little later. But for now, let's dump our bags on our beds and give you a few facts about the journey itself. So we're currently in the town of Donghae on the eastern coast of South Korea. And from here it's going to be 666 kilometers to Vladivostok in Russia. The journey should take, all being well, uh, exactly 24 hours. And yeah, we're leaving at four o'clock and we get to Vladivostok tomorrow. We'll be in well at five o'clock local time and they're an hour ahead, so exactly 24 hours. And the tickets for this ferry were a little bit difficult to come by. There were two ways to book them. Either you come directly to the port prior to leaving or you can email uh, the company itself, which is Do One Shipping, and uh, they'll book it all for you. And it cost us around 200 pounds each for this ferry, which includes obviously all your baggage, but it doesn't include meals. So meals are extra. And uh, yeah, we'll let you know the prices later when we actually find them out. There were different classes too. So we booked the lowest class, which is economy class. And to be honest, we thought we were gonna get a mattress on the floor. But it actually seems like we've been given maybe a slight upgrade because we've got like a hostel type bed almost and we'll show you later but yeah when you were expecting a match from the floor it's a nice surprise but there's also suites you could have got but they were a lot more expensive but they do look pretty comfortable Все уже Лер. Ты не можешь уходить. Да, да. I can't say anything, I'm literally holding the camera. But you're the camera, right? True, very true. turn around and um, yeah from now on it's 660 odd kilometers from here to Vladivostok with open water. Exciting. So as we're currently putting away from South Korea the time is 4.30 and we're actually going to go straight out into the 
Sea of Japan from here and do a big circle so as to avoid North Korea which sits between South Korea and Russia and as the sun sets behind us tonight and we travel through the night we're going to be bypassing North Korea and by the morning hopefully we should be somewhere near the Russian coast. The Eastern Dream usually sails in a loop from Russia to Korea and then on to Japan and back again. And the boat itself is pretty big. In terms of facilities, there are a couple of bars, a duty-free shop, a restaurant, three different sleeping classes, a few decks and areas to walk around, and of course, a banging nightclub. Like a full-on cruise ship. Yeah, right. so Apparently there is a disco. <laughs> disco in the evening. Are we going? Sure. Oh, and as if that wasn't enough, there's even a Japanese onsen. Can you even believe this exists? <laughs> I can't. This is nuts. I mean, obviously it's not working, but it's still pretty nuts. What a view as well, by the way. It's quite shaky. I'm only getting started. I'm only getting started. Oh my god, yeah, we're going to be in the open water soon. Look at the view. Oh yeah, this is the Porsche floor. Junior suit. So dinner is in about an hour and for some reason we're the only people left on the deck up here which is absolutely incredible. So we're using this advantage to um, take as many photos as we can, take as many clips as we can because it's absolutely gorgeous up here as we're pulling away from Korea. All of the mountains in the background, all different shades of blue, it's just absolutely beautiful. Each meal costs 15,000 won per person and it's supposed to be a buffet full of both Korean and Russian goodies. Let's head in and check it out. Thank you. Plates are so small, you just try and get the salad with meat and pasta. It's hard. Kimchi, salad, jar in the kuri chop with the meat. That's so good, I didn't get the sauce. Oh, you did as well? That was well worth 15,000 won. Stavlu like. Stavlu like? Stavlu like. Dva like. That's delicious.
whole world. There's just something about it. It's just so soothing and so gorgeous. The colors are so deep and there are so many different shades. I could literally stare at it all day long. comfortable but I haven't checked that out yet because they're very big yes <laughs> I don't know so the beds look like this but Lerfa made our beds up first whilst we were out clubbing <laughs> <laughs> and yeah the time is 21.39 and to be honest this evening we are absolutely zonked so um, yeah we're gonna call it a night it's been a massive evening of clubbing, an epic evening, but um, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Morning. The time is ten past nine, which means we slept for 12 hours. <laughs> to be honest, it was really, really comfortable in here. Um, the boat was rocking all night, but to be honest, that almost like rocked us into sleep. <laughs> it was really nice and it's so spacious. 12 hours, oh my God. We obviously needed it. It's so dark in here with the light off, by the way. Even now, so much better. Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? Good, you? Terrible. Are you serious? Are you serious? Okay, yeah, good. Good's probably an exaggeration a little bit, but to be honest, it was really, really comfortable. Like, I woke up a lot, but mm -hmm. I think because of the amount of time that we slept, I could slept too rough. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Is it in my head, or is that a phone alarm that's been ringing for the past five hours? Yeah, that was what woke me up. I thought it was mine. I was thinking, why the fuck did <laughs> you put an alarm on? <laughs> I thought it was mine at some point as well because it kept ringing and I also, thought, there's a lady, there's a lady lying there with the curtains closed. She just woke up and looked up at me thinking it was mine and I looked back at her. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not mine. It's but someone else I think. Yeah, someone just left their phone and gone for a walk. Do you know what the time is? Nine, I think. 10.30. Oh. <laughs> no, it's 9.30 but because we're on bloody what's the time now? 10.30. We have like a rest up? Yeah. Do you want to go up and get some fresh air? Yeah, yeah. Let's go.
about four or five hours away from Vladivostok and somewhere there, western direction, there is North Korea. Thank you. This is so weird. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Конечно. Можно, да? А что нет-то? Тань, снимай. Конечно. А что нет-то? Это же не каждый же день такое. Думаю, конечно, да. можно, но он тоже наслаждаемся. Конечно. Снимай. Да. Покажи. Вау, это что такое? Креветочки с... Кто? Креветочки. А, креветочки? Вау, я про это. Выглядит все очень аппетитно. Обалдеть. Самсу. А где Ольга? Я здесь. I'm going all in gourmet. Спагетти. Давайте сюда сядем поближе. French fries with spices on top. Are you going to go for them? Yeah, why not? When in Rome. Or when in a boat in the Japanese suit. So I go here. My turn. Go for it. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. We've got a couple of hours to go, and we can already see different islands and the coast of Primorsky Kraj. As we pull into Vladivostok, I guess it's probably a good time to say why this journey in particular has always fascinated us. And I think as a traveller, from a traveller's perspective, it's always fascinated me, the scale and just sheer vastness of Russia. So we're about to pull into Vladivostok, which is one of the most southeastern entry points in Russia. And nine months ago, we left from one of the most northwestern points of Russia, which was on the border with Estonia, the crossing called Narva. And we're about to cross into Vladivostok from Korea. And just, it's so hard to get it into your head, the sheer scale of this country. We're in East Asia at the moment, and we crossed out of the country into Europe, into the heart of Europe. And just in between here and the crossing at Narva is just thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers of beautiful, varied landscapes. It's just incredible. It really is hard to fathom the sheer vastness and where we are on the planet right now as we cross into Russia. Amazing. And also, I think traveling by boat is our favorite form of transport. I don't know why, as soon as we got on the boat yesterday, you just feel so free. Yeah. I didn't get that feeling anywhere. The train gives me the cozy feeling. I love going everywhere by buses and cars. Plane is probably my least favorite part. <laughs> but um, every form of transport is amazing. It gets you somewhere at the end of the day. But the boat, it's just something about it that I can't just put my finger on. It really helps you grasp how small I think we actually are and how vast scale of our planet is and the oceans in general obviously yeah it's just incredible yeah and that, that feeling of freedom like you say just looking out over the vast open ocean and now just seeing these beautiful cliffs as we come into land just incredible incredible also we've been staring at the birds yesterday you know to see them flying past we were going past north korea it just makes you wonder and calm and just can't help but think that how stupid everything sometimes. Birds just fly free, you know, no one asks them where they come from, where's their visa, what passport they hold. With all these borders and restrictions and 
it's all all imposed by us, all man-made restrictions on on ourselves. And yeah, we're not for not for. So we're about an hour on that note from Vladivostok, we think. And uh, yeah, once we get into port, we um, have to wait on the boat mm. for another hour or so while the um, customs guys look at the ship, inspect yeah. it, and then give it clearance. And then after that, it should be um, open to leave to, to Vladivostok into the far east of Russia, an area we've <laughs> never been before. I'm so excited to see it. <laughs> I think we're gonna love it. I don't know why, I just have this feeling. And every time I had that feeling, I was right. By the way, the weather up here in Vladivostok is vastly different to that of Korea. It was okay in Korea, but here it is bloody chilly, especially with the wind whipping off the Sea of Japan or the Amos Izaliv, where we are right now, but we are so unprepared. <laughs> We're in a t-shirt and a small jacket, and it is freezing. <laughs> Should we go inside? <laughs> Vladivostok and that behind us by the way is Russia's answer to the Golden Gate Bridge which is the bridge between the Russian mainland and the city of Vladivostok and island, Ruski Island and uh, yeah it's about another 15 minutes or so to the port and uh, then we can start disembarking. We made it. We've made it. Welcome to the mysterious capital of the Russian Far East, a city we're going to explore more in the next video. Although in many ways Vladivostok feels like the end point of this journey through Asia, ironically it's also the start point for us as we're going to take the world's longest train journey across Russia. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that, as it's going to be wild. But for now, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. If you would like to get more exclusive content from us, like daily vlogs and other travel vlogs that we don't put on YouTube, you may want to check out our Patreon community, where we post our future plans and loads more other different things. And if you would like to get your name on the credit section here and just support our channel. On that note, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Mwah.